Hey everybody, my name is Tiffany. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thank you for clicking on this video. I'm going over the salary that I made for my first junior developer position. So if you are interested in that, stay watching this video all the way through to the end. I do want to point out that these were the numbers for 2017. So that's when I got my first job as a web developer. And so those are the numbers that we're talking about. I also go over some different stats about the company and stuff like that. Those numbers have changed. Um, the company has been acquired. I recently <laughs> found out as I was going through research for this video. So we're not going to go over what the size of the company is now. We're going to talk about all the company information as it was in 2017 when I was offered this salary. We're going to go over some company information as far as like including like the industry. Then I'm going to talk to you about the job description and how I measured up against it. And then we're going to talk about the offer letters. The company itself was in the property management industry. So basically they managed apartments and they also managed some commercial properties as well. So just keep that in mind. It was headquartered in here in Dallas, Texas. So this was their main headquarters. And I believe they had a few other locations as well. It was a privately held company and they had more than 4,500 employees across 32 states. Now, with that being said, do keep in mind, this was a property management company. So what does that mean? That also includes all of the staff for managing properties. So <laughs> that will include property managers, etc., as well as people that worked in corporate. So just keep that number in mind. That's a little bit of the lay of the land of the company. I'm not gonna give y'all a whole bunch of dreaded details, but I just wanted to give a brief overview of what the company was about, the industry that they were in, just so you can kind of understand what the number is coming from. The now. job description. Hold please, let me go to the job description. All right, I'm not gonna go over this whole entire job description. <laughs> but let's go over, let's go over the, the big parts. And I apologize, cause I am, I am, I'm over here on my phone, cause I don't have my email, my iPad, so I don't have a bigger screen. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what we got. Basically, the web, de the, the web developer is a part of a larger development team. So what they meant by that was saying our core function was for this company's internal system to be, you know, worked on. They also had other developers in other locations that were working on like the actual websites for each of the properties uh, websites. So if you go to any kind of apartment website or whatever, usually at the bottom, it'll say like who manages it and all this other stuff. Those were those people and they managed the website as well, but it was usually a bigger entity that managed it. So that's what they're referring to. Some essential job functions. Um, we're not going to read all these. I'll put them all below like in a screenshot so you could see them, but um, we'll go over some of these, but we're not going to go over all of these maintains existing web applications, including the company's internet site, um, consults with users to determine system functional specifications. So there's communication there collaborating with management staff. We have some stuff about like evaluate jQuery and other open source web-based software. And then they talk about provides desktop support as needed. I was only there for six months and I didn't do any desktop support. Um, that was something mainly the senior developer did. So on this team, one thing I did not mention was it was the senior developer and then there was a database developer and then there was me who was the web developer. So essentially there's like three people on this team. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to give it a big like. I definitely appreciate your support and comment below right now what you think that salary that I received was. What was the salary? Write it down below before you continue on with this video. I'd love to know what you all get. And then with the skills part, let's let's get to the skills portion because this is usually when people start paying attention. So, and this is what I was looking at to be fair. So you're not wrong when you start paying attention to the skills. So motivated self-starter who uh, with a desire to learn, contribute ideas, be a part of the team, attention to detail, 
Um, so right off the bat, did I have those things? Yes. So I was very motivated. I was very excited. I was willing to do all the things. I was so excited for my first job. So I was, I had all the, I checked all these boxes. I was ready to contribute and like, where do you need me boss? Like I'm ready. That's where I was at. And then let's get into some technical things. So they talk about um, writing JavaScript um, and experience with jQuery. Now the site itself did have a, like a lot of jQuery. So yes, I could see how that could be a thing. JavaScript was important as well because it was throughout the website. And then um, they also said experience writing cold fusion or similar server side language. Did I have cold fusion experience? No, I didn't even know what cold fusion was, but I did have experience building like my projects with PHP, with JavaScript, with Ruby, because those were the languages that I learned at the coding bootcamp. So I did have some server side experience just in other languages. And that's what they said that they were looking for similar language or other languages. Either way, they were looking for somebody that knew a little bit about it. Fun fact, I spent a couple, uh, like before I started my job, I spent time like looking at cold fusion code and like, like, what does this even look like? You know, <laughs> cause I didn't know anything about it. So I definitely spent some time looking into it. So definitely do that if you need to. Uh, HTML and CSS, I had that. I had HTML and CSS experience. And then basic understanding of using SQL, relational databases, and like to store application data CRUD methods. So yes, I definitely knew about that. I was doing full stack at the at the coding bootcamp and I was familiar with those CRUD statements. I was familiar with like basic SQL stuff. I was on it. I was like, yes. Um, experience using source control, Git preferred. I did have Git experience. So I knew about GitHub. I knew how to use Git as well and pushing up code as well. So they knew that because I had my code on GitHub too. And they, um, that was one of the things they were excited about. They had effective communication and customer service skills. Now I will say like, I was really good at communicating. Um, I feel like I'm still good with communication stuff. And then customer service, I was like, sure. Like put a smile on the customer's face. Like, I don't know what aspect does that even mean? Sometimes people put stuff on here and I'm just like, well, what do you mean, sir? Do you? And I guess they just mean like just being nice to the people. So a lot of times the people that we worked with, um, were in fact people that were, you know, internal to the organization. So they just meant like, just be nice to people basically. Like don't be rude. <laughs> um, strong interpersonal skills and the ability to work under time constraints. So uh, something I mentioned in another video was like being able to like meet deadlines and stuff like that. So that's all they were referring to. And I had had that experience at a different job of like working under like we need to have something done one day and this day and this way. So I, I had that experience to show not just not necessarily in a coding environment, but definitely in a past work environment. And that's one of those things where like past work experience also becomes important as you are looking for new jobs and stuff like now, that. So. Let's talk a little bit about this education. So they want a bachelor's degree required. Did I meet that requirement? Yes, I graduated. Hello. They prefer a bachelor's degree in a technical field, computer science or IT related field. So I checked that box cause I, um, graduated with an MIS degree, which, uh, if you don't know management information systems, uh, in my program, when I did it, it was business and computer science classes. So check typically requires a minimum of one to three years of demonstrated applicate demonstrated application development experience. <laughs> I got a little tripped up there. I did not have that much experience. Okay. But if you can tell, you probably can't see the grand scheme of things, but I will tell you it's all the way at the bottom. <laughs> of this list. So if you met at this point, if you met the rest of the, the requirements then you're good to go. Um, and then it said the ideal candidate will have experience with, um, Yardi and Ulti pro. And those were just things that they used, um, within their work environment. So if you knew it, that was just better for you. Um, at that time, I do not think I knew, no, I did not know about those things. I'm pretty sure I had no idea what those things were, but to be honest, they weren't super, from what I remember now, they weren't like super, super important to every project that I did. Like, it's just, you may need it for this thing, but you may not need it for the next thing. So something to keep in mind as you're reading through job descriptions too, 
you know, it's just like they they might put stuff on there that you don't need on a day to day basis. So there's, I think they're just covering other bases. Makes sense. Checks out. Now the rest of this stuff, uh, they did put like technical certifications are plus. So that's cool that they added that on there. They didn't say what kind of technical certification. So I think it just left it open ended for a reason. I don't know. Either way, that's it. That's the job description and how I measured up against it. Let's go to what you came here for salary offer letter let's get there all right so the offer letter itself okay i will re uh, read out the actual compensation and the benefits as well and then we'll wrap up this video yeah. the co the compensation i received was fifty thousand dollars annually what i will say is how when i got this job offer they called me with a verbal offer and they're like we're gonna offer you fifty thousand dollars and at that point i was like hot cakes I'll take it. <laughs> um, at the time, I was working as a very part-time instructor, and then I was also working as a teaching assistant at a coding boot camp. So I was like, send me the money, please. <laughs> so I was like, yes, but where do I sign? I said a lot to say, don't be as eager as I was, and definitely counter. Looking back at the process, they expected for me to counter back and I did not counter back. So they kind of stayed quiet. And then I was just like, oh yeah, it's great. And then like, I didn't counter with anything else. And I should have said something like back to them and I did not. So don't do what I did, counter back with an amount or say thank you for this offer. Is there room for negotiation? And then that's how you kind of get that started there. And if you need to say, hey, I also want to go back and, you know, look up some more information, you know, so I can have a better counter offer for you. Whatever you, however you want to word it, just make sure that you go back and you do the research you need to do so that you can ask for more money. As far as benefits are concerned, um, they had medical, dental, vision, 401k, long-term disability, uh, flexible spending accounts and life insurance. So um, the cost of the in the insurance benefits were shared between me and the company. So keep that in mind as well. Everyone talks about like the ending dollar amount, but yes, what's also important is insurance benefits. So especially during this time in the world. So make sure that as you are like going through and you're, you're talking about negotiating as well, make sure that all this stuff sits well with you and it makes sense. And if not, then make sure to ask questions as needed and then go from there and see if you can adjust things as necessary during the negotiation process if you need to. That's the offer. That's what I got. That's the that's the move. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Give you a little bit of insight on the salary that I received um, a few years back. So uh, do your own research, of course, folks. I do have some links below in the description to help you navigate your salary journey if you're interested in that sort of thing, which hopefully you are. Um, and then also make sure to take care of yourself and be kind to others. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.